Well, uh, thank you, Elisa, for the uh, introduction. Um, I wanted to uh, thank you all first for coming. And uh, our talk today, we're going to be going over automating NGS sample prep for challenging samples and niche applications. Um, so just briefly, we're going to go over what we mean by niche application and our, and our definition of a challenging sample type, and then talk about some of our NGS automation solutions from all these various kit vendors, which we are proud to work with every last one of them. And then uh, I'm going to handle the first two, and my colleague David Horvath is going to be handling the, uh, the last uh, two methods, and then to talk about our new Biomech method launcher software. So a niche application, we sort of define that as an uncommon application that is not currently being well addressed by the market. Um, it could, could be adopted more widely uh, with reductions in application time cost or reductions in application complexity. Um, these are just really long, complex methods, even run manually. So automation would come in as a, as a valuable way of reducing the uh, time, reducing the cost, and, and reducing the complexity. And then we have challenging sample types. So in, you know, we've sort of got four major areas where we're sort of looking at a challenging sample type. So one of them would be targeted resequencing, require high amounts of sequencing coverage for, for, um, um, for accurate typing. So for example, with HLA typing, you really need to zero in on a collection of approximately 21 genes inside the human genome. You're not terribly interested in the rest of it. So the workflow required to, to target your RNA or your DNA sequencing application to just those areas in the human genome can be quite, quite uh, challenging and complex. Um, so the sample could be also just physically small. So small RNA, uh, it ranges anywhere from 22 to 36 nucleotides in length. And as such, it requires a, a different uh, way of doing uh, RNA-seq than what is traditionally done in, in uh, poly A capture or ribosomal depletion, uh, where instead of, uh, making rever instead of uh, doing reverse transcription off of fragmented RNA, we were actually ligating adapters onto the small RNA targets and then reverse transcribing that. So that is actually somewhat tricky to do uh, because temperatures need to be controlled. The other primarily problem with small RNA sequencing is that your final product is only about 147 base pairs, approximately, when you're finished with it. And any adapter dimers you might be generating are 120. So doing accurate size separation between contaminating adapter sequences and your actual target can be, can be tricky. Um, you got low input samples, even from high quality samples. So I mean, a lot of people are interested in doing circulating free DNA. Uh, we get you know single cell assays. You have you know people are always kind of driving down. What is the absolute minimum requirement that I need to actually do a, a good DNA seq library? Um, and so David will be talking about Rubicon's throuplex on that one. And the sample's degraded. So uh, circulating free DNA is approximately 160 bases or so we've seen in our in our hands. And of course, anything involving FFP is going to be tricky because the DNA is fragmented. It's got damage. Uh, and it can be quite a pain to actually do get good quality returns on that one. So, so with that, I'm going to launch into our first sort of application that we've developed. So this is around the automation of the Illumina TrueSight HLA uh, sequencing panel. Um, we did it on the Biomech FXP. Um, so why do you care about HLA typing? Well, if you want to transplant, you care about HLA typing. So. The human leukocyte antigen system or the HLA system is about 21 genes, but there's an extremely large amount of sequence variation inside those genes. There's approximately been 12, you know, 20, 12,000 allele variants discovered as of January 2015, and that number just keeps going up. So it codes for cell surface antigens that allows your, the body, cells in your body to recognize whether uh, the neighboring cell is a friend and a native cell, or if it's something that's coming in from outside the system. If it doesn't, if those HLA antigens don't match up, it targeted, the immune system is notified and the uh, uh, foreign cell is then targeted for destruction by the immune system. So if you're talking about doing tissue transplants, it's absolutely vital that you get as close an HLA match as you possibly can. And certain alleles of the HLA system have been associated with a variety of autoimmune disorders. So it's really nice, it's a really active area of research for a variety of uh, human health problems. So Illumina came up with this kit called the TrueSight HLA Sequencing Panel. And it's, <coughs> it's quite a long workflow. So this is the entirety of the workflow here. So you're starting off with genomic DNA and you're doing uh, loci-specific low PCR, uh, eight PCR amplification reactions for each genomic DNA sample. That covers about 11 loci, HLA loci. Uh, the next thing they do is um, the uh, PCR reactions are cleaned up. The amplicons are normalized, tagmented, and turned into Nextera libraries. 
and then those are uh, normalized and pooled to a single tube. So this is a very complex NGS assay. It does, however, replace something like 30 different Sanger assays that have to be done for people who are currently doing HLA typing. So this has been a very much an improvement uh, over current Sanger-based assays. But you can see this is an extremely complex workflow, even for an NGS assay. So we decided we were going to automate this, and we jumped into it heads first. Um, so we've taken that complex assay and broken it down into if, you know, six modules that the user is going to be interacting with. Uh, the first module, which is the generation of the HLA amplicons, is basically just a PCR setup protocol. And we do have uh, standalone methods that allow you to split that out into a, onto a separate liquid handler if your lab has requirements for doing that uh, part of the protocol in a pre-PCR you know, pre area. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be basically following the Illumina protocol, but the user's interaction points are greatly reduced. So here's our Biomech FXP liquid handler. So this particular uh, instrument uh, has two pods, a multi-channel pod here, that's an air displacement system, and a, and a span eight pod over on this side, which is a water displacement pipetting system. And here's just a picture of the deck layout. We've got uh, approximately 15 static positions. We've got a T-Robot integrated thermocycler for doing our thermocycling on deck as well as all of our incubations. And we have uh, a static Peltier over here with our blue aluminum tube block. So we use that for deploying our master mixes and keeping them cold during the, while they're being, uh, you know, so the user can put the, everything on the deck when they start, keeps all your master mixes cold, and you just move on. Um, we've also tried to make the method very easy to operate. So uh, this, is our, this is the user interface for this. It's basically just an HTML GUI that we've built, and uh, the user will then select which of the six processes they want to run and uh, how many samples they want to process, and then the, uh, any specific modules that are associated with that process, like say, for example, they want to specify you know, which uh, i5 or which Nextera XT primer sets they want to use, sets A, B, C, and D, they can specify that on a per plate basis. And then when they get to the particular module, the uh, there's a, a HTML-driven reagent calculator that pops up and shows them what master mixes to put on the block. In the case of the i5, i7 primers, it shows you, you know, which primers to put in which locations on this labware. So we're trying to make everything as simple as we can for the user. So the primer deployment can be really tricky. So this is a standard Nextera protocol as far as this part of it's concerned. So we've got eight i5 primers, and we've got, you know, in this scenario, we're doing you know, 40 samples. Uh, and then we have four uh, i7 protocols. And so the, the machine is going to automatically propagate the i5s going down columns. And then it's going to propagate i7-1 you know, to the first column, 7-2 to the second column, and so on and so forth. So you can see how with, a, with up to 192 libraries with 384 indices to keep track of, this can get complex really quickly. And no one really wants to enter in this much data into their Illumina sample sheet. So we're using Biomex native data set functionality to create data sets that, so that when we assign an I, the index primer ID to the source well, upon transfer, that data is transferred to the destination plate. And then we're actually generating a report actually that shows you which well and what has been associated with which i5 primer and which one has been associated with which i7 primer. So you simply just cut and paste this into your sample sheet and you're good to go. So uh, just a little bit of data. We did three uh, 24 sample runs, 23 uh, genomic DNA samples provided to us by Illumina from the Immunohistocompatibility -histo Working Group, uh, cell lines as well as a negative control. Um, we did, as I said, three runs of this. This is what the HLA amplicons look like after the first amplification process. So they range in size from anywhere from 2 KB up to 10 KB, and then those are turned into these next Terra libraries here. Um, over the course of these runs, we did three sequencing runs at Illumina. Illumina then did the data analysis using their Connexio software that they use for, for assigning HLA variants. And we found that over 99% allele concordance between our automated data and what Illumina was able to generate manually. The 1% data difference actually stems from the fact that Illumina's uh, data that they generated was actually different from the, the IWHG's, uh, IHWG's data because they were finding new variants because the sequencing depth of this was high enough that they were actually identifying new HLA alleles. So we were very, very happy with the, with the, with the reproducibility of this assay, particularly on the automation. So 